Good day, everyone. Richard Copperthwaite for Northwest Access TV. Thanks for joining us. We've got a Swanton show today, specifically Swanton's Energy Initiative with a lot of guests, a lot of information to put out for you. Thanks for joining us. And again, we're taping this show, uh, taping it for the record on Wednesday, September 25th, a, a noteworthy day, which we'll get into later on. I have many guests, and I appreciate everybody uh, coming today. Reg Velova, the Swanton Village Manager. Lauren Grimley with Vermont Gas. Uh, Brad Long with uh, Efficiency Vermont, oh my knee. Again, Richard Copperthwaite, I've introduced <laughs> myself. Uh, Julia Leopold with VIPSA, Vermont Public Power Supply Authority. And Hank Lambert, uh, speaking on behalf of uh, the mm -hmm. Community for Rural, geez, I had this. Vermont Council on Rural Development. Don't mind me, <laughs> all this stuff in front of me. Vermont Council on Rural Development, have I got that right? There you go. And again, a noteworthy visit from the uh, VCRD back in 2015, a community visit and a lot of initiatives, including perhaps this one, have come out of that. Yeah, uh, the Vermont Council on Rural Development um, uh, conducted a community visit in 2015 in Swanton, and they and um, they do these all over the state. And, and the, the the idea is to get citizens together to prioritize, identify, and then prioritize activities uh, that uh, represent uh, the wishes of the, the the community for their future. And that was very successful, and it's still ongoing. And we're we're developing a lot of. Um, a lot of things, thanks to Reg and uh, the village trustees and the town select board and lots of citizens, um, we're, we're doing good work in revitalizing the community. That same organization, the Vermont Council on Rural Development, VCRD, uh, uh, also conducts a, uh, a form and conducts now a uh, Climate Economy Model Communities Program. That's a, so, that's a mouthful. Yeah, the, the whole idea of that is to um, is to get communities in a similar manner as the community visit to identify what uh, activities, uh, initiatives can take place to reduce energy consumption. Um, and I'll read from their from their handbook uh, that um, the climate economy model communities program unites community leadership and bring services to systematically advance home and business efficiency, local energy generation and storage, transportation transitions, trails, paths, and alternative transportation, business incubation, business network, smart growth, local economic development, branding, and marketing. So it's all about, um, uh, it's, it's a fairly comprehensive program and uh, in, in uh, Swanton, there is an energy committee, an energy initiative, and uh, that's what we're here to discuss. Interesting. Well, well put. Reg, you want to add to kind of an overview, add anything? Yeah, to I that? mean, just to add with that, I mean, we appreciate all that Hank and uh, Hank has done for the for the community with the you know starting with the community visit, but you know they were also the him and Molly obviously they played a part with the the uh, climate economy models communities uh, program that we had. So we tried to kick this off. I believe it was in October. And we didn't have uh, as well of a turnout as we did with the community visit. So we decided to break it down into segments. Uh, we started out with businesses, uh, large and small, and then we went to, uh, we went to uh, rental properties, and then we went to single family homes. And then we've also spread it out into our other, our service territory uh, within Swanton Electric. We also went out into Highgate and a little bit into St. Albans. Yeah. So, uh, so this is what this initiative is, is basically it's going to, uh, I don't want to say it's going to uh, come to an end, but uh, Public Power Week is coming up in October. So uh, we'll have a Public Power Day on October 5th, and I'll give Julia some time to talk about that. But uh, uh, we'll have a celebration there on October 5th, and this year happens to be Swanton Electric's 125th birthday. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's noteworthy. Yeah. So, you know, probably have Julia talk a little bit about VEPS's role in uh, in helping us organize this, too, for Public Power Day. 
Yeah, it's coming up on uh, into, yeah. sure. Coming up on October fifth, it's yeah. going to be on the Swanton Village Green. It's exciting because uh, we're going to have a lot of fun, family-friendly activities for any age to enjoy. Um, for the kids, we're going to be getting the big rig trucks out. We're talking about maybe some police cars that kids can check out as well, which uh, I think that should be really enjoyable for the parents. We really want to see the parents get into the electric vehicles that we'll have there. Uh, there's the opportunity to learn about an electric vehicle and possibly even do a test drive. Uh, so really hoping that a lot of the Swanton community will come out. And this whole day is a celebration of public power and everything that a public power utility does for its customers. It's also a celebration of the community. How many members does uh, Steps have? I know Enosburg Falls, uh, one other yep. member from Franklin County, of course. Yeah. How many, how many uh, communities or municipal utilities? Right now we have 11 of the 14 huh. uh, public power utilities in the state. Interesting. So three or yeah, three other municipal electric utilities not hooked up with you folks? Yeah, Burlington Electric is one oh, of those, okay. but we actually Thank have you. this nice sharing uh, situation going on with huh. them where we share a couple staff members. So we do have a pretty close strategic tie to Burlington Electric. Interesting. Lauren, you want to tell us um, how, where do you fit in Vermont Gas? Where do you kind of fit into all this? So... When we first heard about the targeted community um, and Efficiency Vermont brought us in and talked about how Swanton wanted to build their community and get people involved in efficiency and building their economy, that was something that we thought were we were right in the door. We wanted to help customers because we know um, as a utility that serves a large majority in Swanton, Highgate, St. Albans, um, we want to be right in there with everybody else and get customers full well aware of how they can improve their home and through through efficiency. So what we offer our customers, we do this, um, and we offer all our customers this you know, a free free energy audit to come in and we go through the home, we look at the areas where they can improve, um, areas where they can save and just generally lower their, um, their home usage um, on the gas on the gas front. Um, it used to be in the past that we only offered these visits to high users, and now we've actually broadened our um, portfolio of what we offer customers for, for audits. So we offer now um, a one-hour walkthrough, and it's sort of like a coaching to those users, to those homeowners, to say, um, hey, these are areas you're doing a great job, but you can improve a little bit more on this. And when um, and when Efficiency Vermont told us about this initiative, we said, we want to be in there too. Let's let's get all these customers on the same board, on the same page, and how they can improve their home. So And again, this is audit for any any customers now? This is this offers to all our customers, um, but mm -hmm. it's very nice because Swanton, this was a perfect opportunity for us to get in the door because we know in Vermont the energy board the energy burden is very high, mm -hmm. and especially up in Swanton. So what we wanted to do is get in that door with them, especially when you put something out there, um, you know, that you're doing this type of targeted communities and helping them, it gets you right back in the door again to have these customers have it in the front of their brains to, to think about. I think just like to elaborate a little yeah. bit on that too is uh, <clears throat> having our customers uh, within Swanton Highgate understand that we are doing this in unison with Vermont Gas Efficiency Vermont. Yeah. It's not like a stranger is coming in. We're encouraging them to come in and see our customers, huh. talk to them about efficient, uh, energy efficient methods, uh, technologies, things they can help make themselves more comfortable in their homes. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, they're not going off on their own. This is part of what uh, Swanton is trying to do as a community. Exactly. So. We wanted to team <laughs> together to do this. And when you put something, especially when it comes from the town, to say, hey, this is what we're doing. We want Efficiency Vermont, Vermont Gas, VC to come in and let's really try to help the community. We wanted to be in there as well and let's help these customers and help all the residents of these of these towns. Brad was with someone today in Highgate who's a Swanton Village Electric uh, customer and had very good words for uh, Efficiency Vermont. I guess he had gotten an audit and he had an old freezer and an old refrigerator in his basement mm -hmm. and not only uh, they got them out of there and, then, and he got two new a new freezer and a refrigerator for, for no charge. That was a, a better deal than I thought. Is that a typical? I mean, are there, I didn't realize there was there were such good deals around. Are you were aware <laughs> of that, I assume? Or well, did you get a better deal than most people? It, it really depends on income levels. Yeah. Uh, we have different programs geared to different <clears throat> income levels for yeah. folks, so we're trying to meet people where they're at uh, to how to reduce that energy burden across the board, working yeah. through partnerships. 
Sure, but that's a, that sounds like a pretty pretty good deal. That sounds like a really great deal. <laughs> yeah. Now, who anybody can how's Vermont doing energy wise? Uh, is are Vermonters using more energy than I don't know, say five or ten years ago? Or you're certainly making some progress on more efficient more efficiency. Have you got any rough stats anybody can throw out on that? Out of curiosity, oh boy, I used population. To, I, used not going to, I used right to, off the top uh, of my head. From yeah. what I understand, that if you look at Vermont in the perspective of the entire country, we yeah. certainly use a lot less energy as a state compared to the remainder of the country. I, think I mean, on, on a per capita basis, we're talking, I assume. It's yeah. a small state, obviously. Yep. And um, a cold I, state. I think part of that has to do with the fact that um, since we're so far north, we don't typically see as much heat as a lot of the southern states. Yeah. Um, and air conditioning isn't really a, a big thing here. Uh, a lot of people still don't have it in their yeah. homes. Yeah. Something yeah. that I'm curious about, though, is with new technology like cold climate heat pumps, which yeah. uh, help to replace fossil fuel in your heater in the yeah. winter. They can also be used as an air conditioner in the summer. So that's a way that we could potentially use more electricity, which isn't always necessarily a bad thing because Vermont has such a high high uh, portion of its energy portfolio in renewables. So, to consider. so yeah. I mean, that's important to, to, to bring up. Uh, we had a, uh, there was a conversation that we had, uh, I can't remember the, the individual uh, where we were, but they were saying they don't run an air conditioner because they're trying to reduce their carbon footprint. Well, if you're within Swanton Electric, we are 100% renewable. Mm -hmm. And whatever we don't cover through our hydro is covered through other contracts that are also 100% renewable. Renewable energy. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I, I should have brought the our what our portfolio looks like, but <laughs> we do take solar, we do take other hydro, mm -hmm. uh, we do take McNeil, which is a uh, it's a, uh, a wood wood. Uh, wood chip plant. Yeah, it's in, in in Burlington. Yeah, the BEDs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so 100 percent renewable mm -hmm. energy. So, yeah, since well 1894. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so Rich, uh, Rich, how many customers with Swanton Village Electric at this point, r roughly? We got about I believe it's 3,800 or so, 3,900, 3,871. Is it? Let me look at your notes, Julia. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah 3,792. <laughs> 3,800 was pretty pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's. So not all of Swanton. So Hank is one of the unfortunate ones that lives out on the outskirts. He doesn't no, have really, Swanton yeah. Electric. <laughs> but uh, the majority of Swanton is covered by us. Uh, quite a bit of Highgate, and there's parts of uh, St. Albans Town. Interesting. Also covered by us. In terms of energy usage, are, are you using, do you need more energy, I don't know, than, say, again, five, ten years ago? You know, we've actually seen uh, our uh, our energy consumption levelized right now. I mean, we haven't, yeah. uh, you know, you lose a business, another one comes in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you have some of these initiatives that, uh, you know, obviously the state wants to do 90 by 50. So 90 percent renewable by 2050 within the state. Um, you know, that also what we're trying to do is get rid of more of the fossil fuels and go with more cleaner fuels. So that's part of this initiative. Uh, I believe Hank had uh, touched on it earlier about what the VCRD is hoping for this program. Yeah. Vermont Gas, I believe you cover like 98% of SWAN. Correct. Yeah. And what's also nice is um, about a year ago, year and a half ago, we started offering renewable natural gas to customers. Yeah. So you can actually completely offset all of your your na your traditional natural gas with renewable natural gas. Mm -hmm. So if you really truly are trying to take that next step to going towards renewable, this is your pathway to do so without sort of that upfront cost of installing heat pumps. You can do that sort of kind of piece it out, piecemeal it. Um, for what works for you and within your budget as well. So there's there's a lot that um, we want to do to make Swanton, you know, with the combination of electricity being renewable and then Vermont Gas offering it. I think this is a great way to get customers to a more efficient home and renewable home. Net zero is obviously a big focus. So. Yeah. Brad, how long efficiency Vermont seems like I, I hear a lot more about efficiency Vermont than I did, I don't know, a few years ago. Do you feel like you have a increasingly high profile or higher profile these days? Well, I, I think efficiency Vermont started in 2017, a targeted community program. Okay. Um, so we've been embedding ourselves in communities um, for up to a year each time. Uh, to work with community partners to affect uh, some of the services that we offer, whether it's educational opportunities for customers or it's direct incentives or it's just a, a partnership collaboration where we can um, work with, with a number of people to bring uh, a, a number of different things for, for people. Um, oftentimes people don't realize what is available to them uh, in terms of uh, making themselves either more comfortable uh, and more efficient. 
So, mm -hmm. Brent, touch a little bit about, about what's the difference between an energy visit and an energy audit. Sure. Uh, an energy because audit is, uh, is, a, is a very technical visit. Uh, an energy audit mm -hmm. requires a blower door test uh, where we're going to actually mm -hmm. measure the amount of airflow moving through the home. Uh, and take a look at all the other types of either combustion appliances and or electric appliances in the home and, and offer an assessment, usually done by an independent contractor. And again, sorry, is the customer paying for this or is this? Is this yeah, generally speaking, a customer is going to pay for that through an independent typically, contractor. Typically, what's that going to cost? It depends, obviously, on the... It depends on the size of the house, but I've yeah. seen everything from two to maybe $600. Really? Um, a consultative walkthrough, like the ones that uh, Vermont Gas is performing and Efficiency Vermont is performing, what we've done is we're taking our 20 years of knowledge, the experience, uh, the, the, the repetitive information we see again and again, and we're walking into people's homes and we're offering them an analysis based on what we know to be low-hanging fruit. Uh, we're saying, hey, this is really where you're losing a lot of heat, or this is where you're having an issue uh, with electric consumption. Uh, and and it, it's a great place for people to start. If they really want to dig in and they really want to get to the root of some of their problems, they'll probably need to bring in um, BPI certified contractors to their home uh, and really, really dig in with it, starting with an audit. But the, but the visit's free. The, the, yeah, visits, the visit the that visits Efficiency free. Vermont Vermont Gas has partnered on is a free visit to customers. Yeah. Um, we, we come into the home, we spend about an hour, maybe an hour it's and a half. Hour. About a coaching session yeah. Yeah. Um, to yeah. talk about. Um, I will caveat for Vermont Gas customers, we do offer free comprehensive audits for our customers as well, yeah. but it's very similar to what they do, the whole blower door test. So customers yeah. have the option to do either. Um, yeah. And then also, as, and as well with the with the home kind of walkthrough evaluation. Roughly, out of, curi out of curiosity, roughly what percentage of customers who get a visit or an audit We'll, we'll, we'll move on from there and take advantage of that or, or try to improve their home? Have you got So we, it's about, we see about 30% of customers that uh, have a comprehensive audit go through with some sort of efficiency yeah. work and motorization work. Right. Um, that's not necessarily counting if they do equipment upgrade. So that we have a separate, some there's some that are doing both and then some that's only going down the equipment. And again, route. you may have covered this. Do they, is there a price break if they do weatherization? Is there, is there a price break they can get on work they do after? Exactly. You may, have, you may have already. No, I don't. That. I don't think I did actually. No. Um, that's a great question. So for all, when we go through the audit, we pro we provide like a report. Similar efficiency, Vermont does the same. It sort of has an entire walkthrough of the home, where are the areas of improvement, and then we lay out each of the measures or projects that they can do um, that are cost effective, uh, meaning that the the buyback, the payback value is below a certain like year and amount. And we offer an incentive based on those. Each one, if the customer moves forward, we pay um, typically for a single family home, it's um, a third of it. Um, if it is a multifamily and the tenant is, say it's an apartment building, the tenant's paying the gas bill, we offer 50% of it to get those landlords to move forward because we find especially there's several multifamily <coughs> homes um, in Swanton and we find in the rest of our footprint that um, they could use a lot of work that they're older and we really want the tenants to have lower energy bills and they're more comfortable as well. So I'm going to try to elaborate a little bit on that too because this has been one of the difficult things we've been having is to try to figure out how to incentivize landlords mm -hmm. to try to get into their homes to try to make their uh, their rental properties uh, more efficient. Uh, and thus helping with, you know, the, the issues that they have with, you know, tenants paying electric bills or mm -hmm. fuel bills yes. or whatever, you know, and part of this is trying to increase our rental stock or improve our rental stock, mm -hmm. improve the quality of life, you know, economic development, people wanting to come in to Swan. So uh, I mean, we've been trying to figure out how to get into that to, that network, and we haven't. We've had some success, but not as much. I suspect some landlords, Reg, if, especially if there are issues in there with their apartments and stuff, are just maybe a little leery about somebody coming in and just kind of checking checking it out. On yes. can only assume you run into that once in a while. Yes, yeah, so these folks aren't aren't uh, judge, jury, and right. uh, prosecutor, right? <laughs> so they just come in. They're giving you suggestions, and you know they're not going to turn you in so, right. to, yeah. to people. So uh, I think the other part that I hear is uh, there's so much for the lower income, but they're not enough for the moderate income. So if somebody could yeah. elaborate on that. Yes, huh. so I'm happy to. Um, yeah. <laughs> so with the government, um, the governor came up with this climate commission and they had several recommendations. And one of the recommendations was around moderate income. And those are households that are making between 80% and 120% of the area median income. And those are the customers that um, they don't have that disposable income to go forward, but they make more than enough money to qualify. They don't qualify for the low income. So they're sort of in that middle area where they're just overlooked. 
Um, so what came out of that was the governor said, we need to focus on moderate income. And um, Efficiency Vermont, Vermont Gas, and Burlington Electric all said, okay, here's what we, we got to help. How do we get them to move forward? How do we incentivize these homes, um, these households that fall within this moderate income to, to move forward? Because they're the ones that really feel that high energy bill. So we now offer um, 50% of those incentives to move forward with um, to move forward with their weatherization in their home. So typically, a single family home was for Vermont Gas was a third. We've now upped it to fifty percent. And I know if you want to talk about Efficiency Vermont, what you yeah, are Efficiency offering. Vermont has also uh, changed our incentive structure to also meet that demand that that more moderate income. Um, and I, I think right now, don't quote me, but I think right now the incentive is uh, um, up to 50% of our project cost, mm -hmm. uh, but not to exceed about $4,000. So it can be a, a, a very large uh, incentive for somebody to do a weatherization project or to do a mechanical systems upgrade in their home. Interesting. In your, in your service area, Lauren, out of all the folks who could be, you know, who could be using natural gas, mm -hmm. what percentage of folks are using natural gas? Have you got that a rough... Curiosity. Oh, um, within our entire footprint? Well, oh. yeah, I'm thinking around here, but in any anywhere. Oh, I mean, Swanton, we have a mm -hmm. high... Mo most, most people. Most people in Swanton, a very high number in St. Albans as well. Um, yeah. I flipped over about you know, maybe seven, eight years ago. Yeah. You know, I'd grew, grown up with oil heat in Massachusetts, and, but mm -hmm. eventually, eventually went over, and yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. Good. So, so, you, so you're doing pretty well. This is natural yeah. gas, of course, coming out of Canada, correct? Correct. So we are served um, from the Canadian system. We actually aren't um, served. We don't connect to the American system yeah. at all. So we are served. So it comes right through. Uh, um, what's the... Uh, I guess high, 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 high. Uh, is it Highgate? Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Highgate. Highgate. It's yeah. Highgate. Yeah, yeah, the main line comes right through Swamp. Phillipsburg, right. Highgate area. Okay. Yeah. Rich, did you want to jump in? <laughs> oh, it was just, we were talking about incentives. Uh, I know Vermont Gas offers incentives. Uh, Efficiency Vermont also, BEPSA, offers incentives now because uh, being a uh, joint action agency, which uh, there's 11 of us that partake in that, can you elaborate, Julie, on what incentives that BEPSA offers in conjunction with Efficiency Vermont and Vermont Gas? Please. Sure. So we offer, right now, we offer three different rebate incentives, mm -hmm. which are rebates that you submit after you've purchased. It's a little different from Efficiency Vermont, where you typically see the, the discount right as you buy the appliance. Uh, but the rebates that we offer are on electric vehicles, cold climate heat pumps, and heat pump water heaters. We're looking at expanding the program for next year, which is really exciting. We're hoping to include things like lawnmowers and e-bikes, um, but really focusing in on the transportation sector and also on heating. Um, the whole point of our rebates is to convert from fossil fuel. So a little bit different from Efficiency Vermont, where if you are running on electric heat and you want to put in a cold climate heat pump, Efficiency Vermont would be handling that. But if you're running off of fossil fuel heat, maybe gas, maybe it's propane, or oil, uh, and you want to install a cold climate heat pump, then we would be able to give you up to $400 back on that. And what's really nice is that Efficiency Vermont and Vermont Gas are offering these incentives on weatherization. If you take advantage of that, then you get an additional $100 off of our uh, rebate. So it bumps that up again to $400, where if you aren't weatherized, if you're not um, operating uh, at your peak <laughs> at your home, um, then you would only get the $300 rebate for a cold climate heat pump. But for a heat pump water heater, uh, it uses really similar technology to a cold climate heat pump, but instead of heating your house, it heats your water. Uh, you can get $300 back from BEPSA for <coughs> Uh, a rebate, and for an electric vehicle, we're offering up to a thousand dollars. It's eight hundred uh, for the standard electric vehicle. If you're low income and you qualify, then it's up to a thousand. But again, this is offered to Swanton customers. It's also offered to all of our other VEPSA member customers. You mentioned Enosburg Falls. Yeah. Uh, we've actually just had a few rebates come in from there recently, so it's yeah. exciting to see those folks getting on board. Really interesting. So I think it's important yeah. to, to to make note that when you when you want to do efficiency measures and you're looking at appliances, make sure you check with the agencies yes. to make sure that they're acceptable yeah. appliances. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we 
I say we neglected, but this was prior to us being knowledgeable about this, but we upgraded our water treatment facility and stuff and did uh, soft start pumps and all this other stuff. We didn't get as large of a rebate as we could have. Hmm. We've had some businesses come into Swanton and they've done a complete, uh, a, a complete building and we got them connected immediately with Efficiency Vermont and Vermont Gas. Mm -hmm. So they got Great. the highest amount of incentives. Uh, it was a while ago that we went through an entire community, all our service territory, and did all LED lighting. We got a tremendous mm -hmm. rebate uh, from Efficiency Vermont on that. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's important that if, if you're looking at these measures, you'd want to do efficiencies within your business or within your residence or your, your, your rental property, uh, contact uh, these people. Yes. And it's usually it's a one-stop yeah. shop, too. You either call you call Vermont Gas if it's not in their if it's not in their uh, yeah. uh, venue they'll say hey we'll uh, give us your number we'll have Fishy Vermont call you yeah. and vice versa exactly Correct? yes yeah. Yeah. yeah but I think what you're saying is key Reg um, talk to your utilities before you start any kind of work or, exactly. or and I think sorting some of this out can get really complex and really really mm -hmm. uh, really confusing to people. Um, lean on on the utilities we're here we've been here for many many years and, and our job is is to help people make these decisions and prioritize projects within their home. Yeah, we tried to have our phone system set up to, uh, so let's say if somebody called in the office and they said, you know, we wanted to do, uh, we want to do this, is that, a, is that the right type of equipment? We wanted to try to be able to say, well, hang on, I'll connect you with Efficiency Vermont. We just hit a button. Well, our system is antiquated. It can't do that. <laughs> So now <laughs> on all of our electric bills, our utility bills, it says, you know, the number to Finch okay. Vermont. Good. So, That's great. And we've had that connection where, you know, they do the same. If it if it doesn't fall within uh, Efficiency of Vermont's bailiwick, they say, well, it's Vermont Gas will transfer you, that kind of stuff. So that mm -hmm. makes it a lot easier for the uh, lot easier for the uh, for the, the customer, uh, customer that's customer. searching for information. Yeah, I'd like to mention yeah. that um, my wife and I called Efficiency of Vermont uh, for an um, energy visit. And uh, the young man came out and uh, spent about an hour and a half with us and went through some possibilities, things to mm -hmm. look at. And uh, we're gonna end up um, putting in a little more insulation in certain spots, uh, fixing our bulkhead uh, yeah. entrance, mm -hmm. easy stuff. But the point mm -hmm. is that, uh, as you already mentioned, people uh, uh, can easily contact any one of you and uh, and get a community visit. I mean, a, a uh, uh, energy visit, and um, uh, it really works. Yeah. yeah, the goal is to truly make it seamless for the customer. So, yeah. in case they're not sure who to call, they can call any one of us, and we will help them. We'll guide them to who yeah. they need to who they need to contact. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be noted when we say customer uh, efficiency, Vermont means a rate payer. And certainly for Vermont Gas, it's anybody on the, on the gas pipeline there. But if you're a business owner or you're a single family homeowner or a, a multi property uh, owner, uh, we're all here to help you. Um, so it's uh, if you're paying into the to the systems here, we're all we're all here to help. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Vermont Council on Rural Development (VCRD). Sound, I mean, it sounds like it's uh, that visit in 2015 had a big impact, and it sounds like uh, again, it's uh, there are a lot of seeds that have kind of. Grown, grown from that, and maybe including some, because some of this. Yeah, thing. yeah, it's a great organization. They, they are, um, they, they do these uh, community conduct these um, community visits uh, all over the. Uh, and Franklin the County, state. I know Fairfield and Montgomery, and those are two other yeah, Franklin County towns yeah. that have had, I think, pretty recent visits, and yeah. are maybe missing some. But it's amazing the energy that comes from citizens to make to make things happen. Yeah, and with good uh, <coughs> community leadership. Uh, it um, the, the the possibilities are endless, and of course the energy program that uh, we're here to discuss uh, is an offshoot of that. Mm -hmm. um, we probably would not have gotten involved unless a community visit had happened. But uh, anyway, um, <coughs> we're very pleased with all the good things that are happening. And Swanton Enhancement Project, of course, and I guess we have a couple of new leaders for the uh, SCP. Yes, huh? yes, uh, Debbie Winters and, uh, and Betsy Fournier. And, and Betsy Fournier. Yeah, are succeeding over. yourself and your yeah, wife Molly. Molly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I'm so, sure you're still keeping busy on many fronts, even having given that up. Or I'm sure you're obviously yeah, still busy with all, that. Yeah, there's always something going on. Yeah. <laughs> Ways to get into trouble, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Roger, folks, uh, I mean, energy obviously getting a lot of attention these days, especially with climate change, whatever. Do you feel in general people are just kind of, you know, more aware of this or maybe paying a little more attention to initiatives like this? But 
I guess, uh, uh, Richard, this is one of the reasons why we wanted to have this uh, yeah. have this uh, panel discussion to help people understand uh, one Swanton is a public power's utility, and what does that mean to them? I mean, it means that there are stakeholders. You know, you have an IOU that is, uh, you know, let's say uh, uh, GMP. They have you know uh, shareholders, uh, board of directors, everything else. Well, for us, our ratepayers are our board of directors, mm -hmm. yeah, our shareholders. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand what uh, what public power means to them. It means that uh, the majority, uh, you know, you make a call. It's within a half hour. Somebody's there to help you out. Really? You know, and uh, I would say better than ninety percent of our customers, we know them by their first name. Um, you know, so when there's issues, you know, you can you call us up. You know, don't wait till you get so far behind on your bill, you're upside down. Call us. We're there to help you out to get through the process. You know, to help make you whole again. Um, it's just it's local people, local control, and it's what makes Vermont uh, spin. And if, and if someone makes that call, they're going to get a live a live yep. person. I bet on the yep. other end of the phone. So even after always, hours, always nice. even after hours, uh, you know, really? we uh, we operate our hydro <coughs> facility, huh. and that is a twenty four or seven man right. uh, staffed uh, right. place. So we call I call it our PSAP, our Public uh, Safety Information Center. Huh. So if you have an outage. Uh, chances are they probably know ahead of time before you do, but still call uh, the 868-4100. Uh, yeah. And uh, I hope that's the right one, 41 or 42. <laughs> one of those two. Anyway, you call that number and there's somebody there. They'll pick up the phone and uh, they'll say, you know, Swanton Hydro, uh, what can I help you with? Or Highgate Hydro. Uh, an yeah. issue I've talked to, an issue that has come up on uh, some of our other shows, hydroelectricity seems to not get the respect that certainly people here think it should do you do you feel that is it you feel it you feel you're kind of fighting a battle to give hydroelectricity i don't know the respect it deserves i think that there are a lot of different arguments and different sides to it but what's so wonderful about hydro is the fact that it's renewable yeah. and that's what powers swanton you are a small municipal utility in the state of vermont that's 100 percent renewable. That's fantastic. Awesome. And that's something that's so important to Vermonters. Um, right now, we're working on relicense, relicensing a few of our hydros uh, within FIPSA member territory. And um, I just I think it's so important for the people of Vermont to see what it is that their hydro facilities do for them. It powers them. It keeps them renewable. It also allows for local jobs to stay in place, and it helps grow the community and the economy. Um, I think that it's almost easy to ignore because a lot of these hydro facilities have been in place for so long. Mm. You mentioned the one at Highgate Falls, the Ormond Croft facility, that's been there yeah. since I believe the late 1700s. Uh, <laughs> prior to us ha having it, really? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It was it was used as, uh, I believe, the, I don't know if it was a grist mill or a logging uh, grist mill. Really? Grist mill. Uh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. And and it's been operational, I think, since 1797. No, that's and pretty it's, impressive. And it's still around today and still powering the community. It's mm. part of Vermont's history and part of our renewable future. Your other 10 members, uh, are some of those or all of those also 100% renewable? Or Swanton's the only no, one, really. but all no, of everyone, uh, every one of our VEPSA members um, is compliant with the renewable energy standard in yeah. Vermont, which requires that we're 55% renewable, but the fact that we have Swanton on board boosts yeah. us up to closer to 60% renewable for all of those public power utilities. Yeah. Right, so we've talked about this on other Swanton shows, just about hydroelectricity and just, you know, what seems to be a lack of respect in some quarters. Is that a, yeah, kind, of, I, kind of an ongoing I think the, issue? The, yeah, I think where the lack of respect came in was uh, the initiative that was brought in prior to uh, prior to the governor now was they wanted new renewables, so existing. They didn't want to recognize that as being right. uh, renewable, mm -hmm. so they were trying to incentivize other things. You know, and basically, what in my opinion, and I'll say this, and people can chase me out of the state <laughs> later, but I'll say that with with the onset of all these uh, erroneous or obscure initiatives, you had all these developers coming into the state of Vermont and uh, building all these huge solar farms and wind towers and stuff, and the electricity wasn't even staying in the state of Vermont. Right. They were selling it out of state to get more uh, uh, RECs, they call renewable, mm -hmm. renewable energy credits. Right. You know, so it didn't, I don't think it did what, what the administration was hoping it would do, was boost more uh, renewables within the state mm -hmm. and not selling it out of the state. All it did was put money in people's you know, private industry's pockets and not. So, so again, the goal is still uh, by 2050 to have Vermont 90% renewable That's energy? still the goal. Yeah. Re realistic goal? Why? 
And again, what did, absolutely. Swanton has already done. I'm sorry, yeah, Swanton. Swanton what, 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 is it, what percentage are we at today, roughly anyway? Oh, about 55% is sorry, that, said that. And that is, that's, um, that's the state level. There are some utilities who have surpassed that, like Swanton, for example. Swanton. I also huh. want to mention, Reg, because we were talking about the value of hydro and the value of public power. Huh. Hydro helps to keep electricity at a low cost. And that's something that's so important to so many communities in Vermont, huh. in addition to being renewable. So hydro is really the foundation of that. It's the backbone of economic uh, renewability. Um, once you start adding in things like solar, it's fantastic, but it does drive the price up. If you look at Swanton's prices, uh, the most recent data that we have available is from 2017. Swanton's prices were 25% lower than the average statewide rate for electricity and they're 100% really? renewable. Wow. And still low, lowest in the state or second uh, lowest, no, right? Lund low, yes. Lund low, <laughs> and, and, and uh, Orleans. Lund low one is Lund low one of your people. Lund low and Orleans yeah. are also both uh, part right. of that. Oh, so you drop, drop to number three here? Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. So every time we get across the board table, John Morley always looks at me and says, Orleans got you, you keep touting. <laughs> Sorry, I'll let, like you win. I'll let you win this time. It sounds so. like you're doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Any potential to get more members? Or I mean, we have, uh, again, a total of 14. Is anybody else looking to get into the hydro, municipal hydro business? <laughs> um, I think that it's, um, it's really great that we have this relationship that we do um, with Burlington Electric. I don't know if uh, we'll see them join on as members. That's yet to be determined. And I think they've, never, they've never been a VEP, VEP, VEPSA member? Um, you know, VEPSA. I'm... I'm Reg sorry. is the board of the chair. He might have some more insight into the history. Huh. Yeah, so I was I got the pleasure of being the chairman of uh, VEPSA. Huh. So yeah, I've been, I, so I have had nothing. You have nothing else to do, right? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I was telling him it was a one and done. I was only going to do it one year, and now I think I'm on my fourth. <laughs> yeah, year. That's how they get you. Yeah, one year. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they just can't say no. But uh, uh, years ago, Burlington Electric was part of VEPSA, and I don't uh, honestly the the history behind that why they just uh, separated, but now. <clears throat> <clears throat> like what Julia saying, we do a we affiliate with them, so they we, oh, yeah. uh, yeah. affiliate member, I guess, with lack of another word. Yeah. But you know, we share uh, resources. So like purchase power, we share resources with them, yeah. and we also share in the legislature. Uh, 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 going yes, in, and, yeah, going in to try yeah. to uh, help bills along that will help public power move forward in the future and stuff. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, uh, we we have uh, there's two utilities. I mean, maybe down the road uh, they would want to come into the fold, but again, we uh, VEPSA can offer services for uh, not just public power, but also the IOUs like Washington Electric. We offer uh, programs for them, and I don't think we do for Vermont Electric Co-op. I'm not sure on that. Yeah, I don't believe so. Yeah. I think That's what's going to be fantastic, though, with VEPSA is that we're going to see um, our offerings grow, and we're going to be changing with the state and keeping up with all of these new standards that are coming out, and it's exciting to see um, all of these public power utilities coming together. It's all these small communities with their own individual personalities, and we're working towards the same goal. B and B Burlington Electric, all their powers, wood wood chips, is that all their power or just some yeah. <laughs> it's it's a really complicated question. <laughs> right. just, um, I, just gonna, I was just gonna say kind of a Swanton <laughs> connection. The, uh, the wood chip trains originate in Swanton last yep. time okay. I checked. Yep. So mm -hmm. this this is actually something that I've been looking into a little oh. bit specifically for Swanton. Um, oh. and Reg mentioned it before um, when he said Rex. So there's there's your energy profile before the sale of Rex and then after the sale of Rex, and those are your renewable energy credits. So prior to the sale of your Rex, you're looking at your different electricity sources. For Swanton, it's mostly hydro. Um, prior to sale of Rex, that's about 60% hydro. That's from your local Ormancroft facility. There's about 7% coming from hydro elsewhere in the state and outside of the state. And then you have some other small percentages of different types of fuel mixes. But then when you take the RECs into account, you're able to, to buy and sell renewable energy credits, and that's what's able to uh, add to your renewable portfolio while keeping those costs yeah. low. Yeah, some of the stuff is fairly yeah, regular. The, the more I know, the more I know I don't know when it gets into when you so get into the questions. weeds into that. Yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, let's flip over. I want to give the Zim some uh, attention here. Again, we're taping the show on uh, Wednesday, September twenty fifth, and and on this day, the uh, the Zim, the Zero Energy Modular Home, arrived in Swanton. And I guess there was an open house uh, today. Again, folks won't be watching us for a few days, but this is kind of who wants to talk about the uh, Brad. Brad, you are here. You're 
Zen expert here? Yeah, I'd be happy to speak about the Zem Home. Uh, the Zem Home is, is for sale. Can somebody uh, go to Swanton and today and buy and buy this or buy a, a replica or something? Well, they can't buy this one just yet. Not this one. Uh, it, this one will be available for sale later on in the year. Okay. Uh, but the Zem Home was built by a manufacturer called Vermont uh, out of Wilder, Vermont. They've huh. uh, they've sold over a hundred of these so far throughout the state. Really. Um, but it is a price, zero price tag being. You know, it, it, it varies. Um, the one that's downtown here is in the hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar range with really? the uh, seven kW solar array on the roof. Huh. Um, but the idea behind the home um, is that it, it is combining modern um, construction technology and modern uh, appliances together in one package that allows somebody to have a home that is producing enough energy to uh, create its uh, a, a zero footprint. For refrigeration, for cooking, for hot water, for heating and cooling, um, it's it's mm. really pretty neat. If you get an opportunity, uh, come on down and, and, and check the Zem Home out. It'll be um, down. Uh, is it Church Street? Is it? Well, we actually had to put it in the park. It's in the park. It, okay. So it's you in the park. Church Street, you'll see the home. <laughs> okay. It, it's in the park. It's uh, Wednesdays and Fridays from two to six p.m. and uh, Saturdays <clears> and Sundays from ten a.m. until. Uh, 2 p.m. and it'll be there until the um, the public power day celebration. And sat on Saturday, October 5th That's for that. Right. Yep. 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 And I got a key to it, so if anybody doesn't want to, <laughs> doesn't want to see it, I the can swan, The swan's in charge of just uh, making sure at night nothing nothing bad's going on? Yeah, well, it's right under the lights. So it should be fine. Yeah. So the sole, the sole source of power is uh, solar? Is that right? The home has a 7 kW array. The recommendation is that we hook this home up to the grid. Uh, in Vermont, because we don't have 12 months of Good, strong sunshine. We don't. We don't. Uh, we're no, we, we don't. Right. We, a couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> but generally speaking, what, what you'll end up doing is you'll build credit with your utility uh, in the sunnier months, and you'll pull from that credit in the cloudier months. At the end of the year, it should be a, a net zero um, result. Does this, does this tour around the state, uh, this particular ZEM? Or? This particular ZEM has been touring around the state for a couple of years now. Oh. Um, we most recently had it in uh, Rutland. It was in Rutland for about six, seven weeks. And before yeah. that, it was in Bellows Falls for about eight weeks. Yeah. Um, there's been a couple thousand people through the home this year so far. And yeah. um, I will tell you, most people get in and say it's really comfortable. It's quiet, and it's bigger than it, it looks like on the outside. How many, how many bedrooms were you talking? The one that's on display is a one-bedroom, one-bath unit, uh, but I know oh. that the manufacturer can offer up to three-bedroom, two-bath. Really? Yeah. And is this huh. for, uh, are you looking to um, offer these to new homeowners, or are you mostly looking to convert existing homes? You know, Efficiency Vermont's uh, goal with this is to demonstrate to people the different types of technology that are available. Whether it's a construction technology or a mechanical technology, it's not necessarily to convert somebody to this. Uh, it's to demonstrate to somebody, hey, this is what a heat pump is like when it's working. I had a number of people come into the house and say, well, we heard about the heat pump. And I said, well, it's up there. And they said, no, that's the air conditioner. <laughs> well, that's the heat pump. Uh, so it's, it's an educational opportunity for folks. But if somebody is looking to uh, to to have a, a very low um, footprint, this is an awesome way to do it, and you'll be extremely comfortable doing it. It's really, really a neat. It's it's a neat little house to come check out. Yeah, I think the school. Uh, I went and talked to the elementary school today, and they had the brochure. It was supposed to go into their Wednesday weeklies. Uh, well, today, Wednesday, and uh, the, they were supposed to communicate to the high school too. So there may be a couple of uh, school groups visiting the uh, the Zem coming up this week. So that's exciting, you know. And part of the part of this, the hope is educate our children so they understand there's difference uh, differences between uh, uh, renewable energy. What's the importance? Uh, the solar wall. You have a battery wall in there. There's a battery. Uh, the air, the clean air filter. It's in there, mm -hmm. and obviously you can't see them, but the solar panels on the roof. So it's just a good educational opportunity for us. So Red, Saturday, October 5th, big big day, the public power celebration. Well, we did it last have you done, year. Have you done that in the past? <laughs> we did it, well, uh, quite a few years ago, yeah, we did. But we did one last year, and uh, we had a busload of kids showed up, and it was kind of cool, it was fun. Uh, but uh, it was our first year trying it again. And now Julia's on board. She's our, the public communications. <laughs> and communication specialist. Communication for specialist yeah. in BEPSA. Yeah. So helping us, you know, helping us uh, brag about being public power. So we'll do that Saturday. Uh, I've already uh, I've already told the fire guys that they're going to be there. <laughs> and, uh, I did tell the police guys they'll be there. 
uh, our public works should have a truck there. Our line crew <laughs> should have trucks there. Yeah. Uh, talk to the town to see if they could have a, one of their trucks there as well. Okay. So trying to get just you know trying to get people out there. Uh, Vermont Gas is going to be there. Fishes Vermont is going to be there. Yeah. I believe Rise Vermont will be there as well. So it was just, it'll be kind of like a big rig day, but it's going to be a celebration of public power, celebration of uh, renewable energy, celebration of, uh, uh, yeah, SWAN. So. That's good. And the hour, the hours for this? It's going to be uh, uh, 10 to 2. 10 to 2? Yeah. 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 And, and the Zim, where's the Zim heading? heading uh, where, where's its next stop, you know? I don't know where it's going uh, after that. Yeah. I think I, Michelle I, was in Brandon, I think. Uh, it, it might be popping in Brandon before it's, it's done for the season. We usually get it off the road before the snow flies. Yeah. Oh, is, it, is that right? Well, That's generally, but it's been at our Better Buildings by Design uh, conference in February. So, yeah. Does anybody get to live in it and it's off season? <laughs> no, but this one will be for sale after this tour. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And you said, you said about 100 have been sold? Uh, Vermont indicated to me, I went and toured their facility uh, yeah. earlier in the summer, and they indicated they had just sold their, their 100th unit. Really? Uh, so there's over 100 families uh, living in these little homes throughout the state. Interesting. Yeah. Other states, presumably other states, some other states, most other states have similar initiatives or any idea? I, I, I personally don't know of any other initiatives really? from other states when it comes to this kind really? of building technology. Mm -hmm. Huh. Is that right? But I'm sure there there might be. Yeah, you know, this is pretty similar to what you would call, you know, the the big thing was tiny homes. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? so it is right. pretty similar to that. I mean, this one tiny it's homes. 14 by 50, right? I believe yeah. this one is. It, there there is a distinct difference, and and the, the the biggest difference is most tiny homes can be trailered from location to location. This home okay. is a modular home, and its intention is to be to be put onto a permanent foundation. So this mm -hmm. is. This is a home like any other home. It's not. It's not mobile. It's not uh, manufactured. It is a modular home, uh, built, assembled in a factory, and, and finally assembled on site. Cool. Now, one of the things I wanted to, wanted to bring up, and I wasn't going to put Brad on the spot, so I'll talk about it a little bit because Brad Brad's background is more in the ZEM, more in these programs with the home visits and that kind of stuff. But within each utility, we have a, what they call EEU charge, efficiency Vermont charge. The same thing with Vermont Gas. There's a charge in there, and that's you know for energy efficient uh, uh, programs. So within Swanton, each utility uh, customer pays a certain amount to Efficiency Vermont. And one of these, uh, is, so during this initiative, what we're trying to do is be able, be able to trace the money back to Swanton. So Swanton as a whole over the uh, over a year is about six hundred eighty thousand dollars that we send into Efficiency Vermont for. Uh, through the, via the EEU charges. And uh, Efficiency Vermont has been working very diligently to try to follow the money, to see, you know, uh, to see, you know, it's not just light bulbs, right? To, so they've been, uh, they've been doing uh, their due diligence to try to show us, you know, this is how much you've given so far, this is what we've given out for incentives, uh, you know, these are the things that, you know, they call it non-incentive, but it's difficult because if you go to, if you go to Home Depot and you buy a, a refrigerator, and uh, they don't know you live in Swanton. That's one of the things there. Well, how do you translate? Well, I lived in Swanton. Uh, I put that money in, but you can't directly refer yeah. it back to Swanton, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But uh, so, you know, we're working hard with them to try to do, to do that stuff. But I really encourage uh, residents to take advantage of, you know, the rebates that are out there to be offered. Do the visit. You know, if you like the visit, uh, or do the audit. And uh, you know, make your homes more comfortable. Now, efficiency Vermont. I don't have enough idea what the EU charges are used for. So, if you could for Vermont Gas, yes, yeah. So Sorry. it's this. It's very similar. We're an efficient energy efficiency utility like um, Efficiency Vermont and Burlington Electric. So we collect the EEC charge based on the customer's usage, and that is used to help support our program. And that program gets used throughout our entire footprint. So that is used for weatherization, providing incentives for weatherization, um, providing rebates for customer equipment upgrades, um, technical assistance, um, point of sale rebates. So when when you go and you want to buy a smart thermostat or any if you go into Lowe's or Home Depot there's a point of sale that um, we work with with Efficiency Vermont so within you know the entire state everybody gets that no matter um, who their fuel provider is so there's a lot that that efficiency charge I don't know exactly what we collect from Swanton offhand I wouldn't I don't know that offhand but yeah <laughs> it is 
it's all based on usage. So at least it's lower in the summer. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so if you weatherize, you use less. Your mm -hmm. energy, see, it all comes full circle. Mm -hmm. But um, but it just supports what the general goals of an energy efficiency utility is in the state, and that's essentially to get to that 90 by 2050. Um, the goal, um, I believe, the Energy Action Network put out um, sort of a report that said how many homes that they need to weatherize to help get to this goal. And I believe it was around the 80,000 plus mark of home weatherizations that need to be completed to help get to that goal. Really? It's not going to solve it, but it's going to help aid in um, reducing the thermal usage in the state that contributes to the carbon emissions. So um, our program, along with Efficiency Vermont, is really trying to hit those homes. So we start um, getting these home weatherized and reducing our footprint and everyone's footprint in the state to get to that 90 by 2050. So mm -hmm. that is uh, <clears throat> the important part to this too. Is this is initiative through the PUC, mm -hmm. right? This is a directive by them. Efficiency Vermont was at 2000. I believe you were established. You're founded in 2000. Mm -hmm. But this is something that the state said that, um, you know, utilities, uh, we need to try to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to try to have offer incentives. Uh, we're going to form this commission, uh, the EUC, or the uh, Efficiency Vermont, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, to have, uh, to carve out a portion of the electric bill to go to help with uh, incentivizing uh, efficiency measures. So, you know, years ago, it was just light bulbs, right? It was the incandescence, <laughs> and then it went to fluorescence, and now it's the LEDs. Well, they're, they're venturing off and doing more than just the light bulbs. Yeah, we work with commercial and industrial customers throughout the state. We work with homeowners throughout the state, uh, multifamily property owners, small, medium business owners, um, you name it. What we're trying to do is we're trying to help people reduce their energy use, which reduces their cost of living. Uh, so that that money can be applied elsewhere, whether it's uh, food or, or clothing or education. Um, the other thing we know is that when, when people are more efficient, they tend to be more comfortable. Uh, and that level of comfort can just improve people's quality of lives. So the, the goal here really is just to work with people closely as possible. The home energy visits uh, that Vermont Gas is offering and the Efficiency Vermont is offering is a fantastic mm. opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation mm. with, uh, with an organization that really can help you and really has an intention to help you. I would encourage anybody out there to, to give either Vermont Gas mm -hmm. or Efficiency Vermont a call um, or stop at the Zem home uh, and have a, a conversation with us and, and have us come into the home, have us come into the business and talk with you. And we will we will parlay all the resources we have here, all of our yeah. partners, and, and help folks in the most effective way possible. I know mm -hmm. three of our largest businesses within Swanton have had a lot of success with Efficiency Vermont and Vermont Gas mm -hmm. uh, initiatives. Mm -hmm. You know, so obviously, uh, selfishly, we wanted to have this uh, climate economies, models, communities program come to Swanton because it helps, you know, get our businesses mm -hmm. become more economically viable. Mm -hmm. You know, they can in turn, if they're saving a lot of money, maybe hire more people, uh, you know, and then just help Swanton's economy as a whole. So I know Cargill uh, mm -hmm. touted very good re uh, results. A leader evaporator uh, of Vermont Precision Tools also touted a lot of good results that they had for the Efficiency Vermont. Mm. Uh, David Fosgate's property, I know they went in in, in conception and uh, helped him uh, figure out how to, to improve his uh, the inside with the lighting, with the uh, fork trucks, with uh, uh, I think it was his furnaces also. So they did a lot of work up front to help with that. What we find is a lot of businesses are really good at making their widget or offering their service. Most businesses, like most homes, don't know how to manage their energy as effectively as, as they possibly could. And, th and that's where we can really help because we will help analyze the, the, the work processes, the procedures, whatever it might be, uh, and, and help people find a way to be more comfortable but also reduce that energy consumption. And I think especially there's so many small, medium businesses in Swanton and in Vermont in general that that bottom line really matters. So if we can help them save to stay in business that extra couple months, so anything that helps them on that bottom line and putting in efficient, um, whether it's specific equipment or if it's a restaurant with kitchen hood, some sort of control, something that helps reduce their energy usage, keeps them in business longer, helps Vermont mm -hmm. in the long run. So yes. that's what we want to do. So I've had this question. So I'm a business person. I started a small business when I'm running my, my business from a landlord. Mm -hmm. How do I get these incentives to help me with my bottom line to help pay my rent for my business? Great question. Um, the, that 
we hear this all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so what we try to do is, depending on if the equipment is owned and paid for by that business, we work with them on what they can do. If it's something that's sort of on the envelope of the building and they have to rent from it, we work with the home with the property owner. Okay. So it's so then that takes a bit more incentive to get that that property owner to move forward with that. So if the property owner's income is up here, but the renters is down here. How do you get that gap to get the incentives that they need to keep their business viable? Um, so we don't use income level for um, commercial. Okay. So, but That's if it's a multi, but if it, if it's a multi-family um, and it's you know like it's a rental building or whatever it is, um, we don't obviously we look at the property owner that the value, but we offer the higher incentive to get them to move forward to weather eyes for cool. for rental equipment for rental properties. Cool. So. Thank you. For that. Yep. And Vermont Gas and Efficiency Vermont both offer an analysis um, yes. of, of the different options available to people. So um, we'll be able to help people determine where their best return on investment yeah. is. We're a third party. Um, we're not selling anything. And, That's exactly um, right. We're there to help people make a decision sometimes yeah. more than anything else. And it's not an all or nothing. We offer... No. Here you can do this, and if they're like, "That's too much," and we're like, "Okay, what's what's better for you it, at this point?" Yeah. Yeah. It's not uncommon to see a home go through a, a three to five year process to go through yeah. a weatherization or an upgrade of appliances. Same thing for a business. You know, <clears throat> you can't walk into a um, an establishment and expect to, uh, to to reinvent it overnight. It's not going to happen. It's not affordable. Yeah. Um, so what we'll often do is is work to help uh, an organization or, or a household determine. This is, this is the priority. Here, here's where we start. Here are the incentives. Yeah. Uh, here's some information. If you want to do it yourself, here's programs for you. If you want to hire contractors, we have programs there too. Yeah. Uh, so part of our, our, our goal here is to help people make these decisions and to offer a third-party analysis that we have no strings. We're, we're not attached yeah. to that analysis. We're not attached to that decision. Mm -hmm. it, so I'm going to look at Julia too for this one. But you know, when we had the conversation about you know, being part of VEPSA, you know, as, a, as Swan, you know, we don't have deep pockets, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we we keep our prices low for a reason, you know, uh, and uh, so to help offer some incentives, I mean, we we partnered with VEPSA. So with the other 11 utilities, there's a certain amount uh, that we put in to help offer these incentives for the heat pumps, the electric cars, the, uh, you know, and those type of uh, incentives. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what being part of a joint action agency helps you do. Mm -hmm. You're small, but together you're larger. You know, and you get the opportunity to do these kind of things. And we also are able to learn from each other a little bit. Um, in addition to the rebates that we offer, we also offer custom projects. So if there's a business in Swanton, um, maybe one that needs large commercial uh, lawn mowers, we can work on getting a rebate for that. It doesn't necessarily have to be one of those three rebates that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. We can find different opportunities for fossil fuel transformation and for lowering your cost and giving you a little bit of money back up front. So to connect with any one of these agencies, whether it's with VEPSA, Vermont Gas, or Efficiency mm -hmm. Vermont, it's on the Village's website. So you, mm -hmm. you know, www.swanton.net, get on there, and you'll see the links to all of these, uh, all of these programs, all of these uh, agencies. So. I think you know the community well. Do you think the energy messages is this stuff um, sink, sinking in? Do you think getting more attention anyway? Yeah, I think it is. More and more people are talking it up and yeah. uh, uh, going to that phone that phone line and making the calls. So I, I think it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. I'll just down to about two minutes. Electric vehicles came up a few times. Uh, I get the sense people are not going crazy buying electric vehicles in Vermont. <laughs> Anybody here can address that in a minute or so? Or? I can talk quickly, and I'll let Julia, because okay, she's part of that. Just a so couple minutes. We've, we've got uh, two double uh, plug-in thingies at our park oh, and ride in Swanton. Okay. So it was part of the, uh, it was part of the um, park and ride program. So we have those in there. We've seen a little increase in the use of electric vehicles, but yeah. Julia, you got better numbers? Yeah. Um, well, I can say that uh, we haven't seen too many electric vehicle rebates being put out this year by VEPSA, which yeah. to me says that we don't see a lot of people buying them. And I think part of the reason for that is um, there was recently a dealer that stopped making a certain plug-in hybrid vehicle. Yeah. And plug-in hybrids tend to be pretty popular in Vermont because I think that there are concerns about the battery maybe not lasting throughout the winter months, maybe not giving you 
as long of a range, but if you have the option for some fuel as a backup, um, you might feel a little bit more comfortable. I will say though, and I'll address this specifically because the Swanton <coughs> customer called me the other day asking about this, um, whether we'll be offering incentives on used electric vehicles. Mm. And it looks like yeah. for 2020, we will be working in that area. And um, if anyone wants to buy a pre-owned mm. electric vehicle or plug-in hybrid, they can get an incentive back from Swanton. Mm. Interesting. Mm. So I just, <clears throat> if I could, I'll just give you the last to, word. Yeah, yeah trying to cap this off. So, <laughs> thanks. There's no way that we could do this uh, by ourselves. You know, it's the collaboration with with Hank. You know, uh, with everything they, that he, him and Molly does within the community, but also VCRD with VEPSA being that joint action agency and mm -hmm. working with Efficiency Vermont and Vermont Gas. There's just there's too many moving parts for uh, a small utility like Swanton, uh, mm -hmm. a small person like me, to be able to get all this done. <laughs> so being able to collaborate and work well with people and understanding where you know how to draw that line and connect that dot to, to get the help that you need. So it's out there, it's in our on our website, so there's help out there for people, they just need to look for it. Very good, I think we'll leave it there. Uh, again, I really appreciate the time. Rich Bellavo, the Swanton Thanks. Village Manager, Lauren Grimley with Vermont Gas, Brad Long with Efficiency Vermont, Julia Leopold with Vermont Public Power Supply Authority, and Hank Lambert with Vermont Council on Rural Development, uh, speaking on behalf of VCRD. Thanks a lot for the time. You covered a lot of ground. Appreciate you taking the Thank time you. and joining us. Thanks, folks, for watching us here on Northwest Access TV. I'm Richard Cobberthwaite, and thanks for my man Zach behind the scenes for doing all the hard work around here. Thanks a lot for watching. See ya.